welcome back to the channel everybody we have some huge news today huge xrp news right then we have some bitcoin news we have a lot of banking news today all right so let's begin here hope you're all having a fantastic day this article is titled uphold confirms and you know what someone in the comment section we have the absolute best subscribers and members only section as well someone was telling me about this recently and now it's confirmed this article is titled uphold confirms fed now processes xrp transactions let's begin reading then i'll make my comments afterward it says prominent american crypto exchange uphold has confirmed that fed now facilitates xrp transactions to select u.s bank accounts listen they had to they need to be integrated with the new financial system because fed now failed so gloriously they i mean the legacy system doesn't want to be a part of these new legacy system offerings they don't they just it's not advantageous to them. So now what they have to do and what I thought all along, all these years, you're starting to see it manifest now is that they will have to congeal with the new financial system to share in the advantages of systems like the XRPL, XRP, XRP is the best of the best that they have to offer on the XRPL, no matter what they add to it. Everything else is complimentary, just like Brad Garlinghouse said. So they need to be a part of that. It's either going to be that or Stellar or Algorand or something like that, in my humble opinion. But they chose XRP. Makes perfect sense to me. And that's going to bring them a little bit closer to the uh, usability that they actually want and bringing in some of those institutions they actually want to bring in. I still believe that we're going to dominate outright. Right. They're just kind of, they're just tagging along. We don't really need them. But it's a bonus. Sure, if they can bring a little extra, you know, value and transactions to us in the future, that's just a bonus. But it says this. It says this confirmation came in a recent post on X following the Crypto Basics report indicating that Fed now processed a deposit transaction involving XRP to a U.S. bank account. Of course, there's nothing faster. There's nothing better. There's nothing as cheap as that with all of the other things packaged together with that cheapness other than XRP. You know, unless you like I said, you want to go to XLM route. E either way, I win. It makes no difference. Right. So notably. XRP enthusiast crypto value hunter first called attention to the transaction on Monday after he observed that the payment description of his XRP withdrawal contained information suggesting that the U.S. Federal Reserve instant payment system fed now process the XRP funds. Whoa, good catch. Shout out to crypto value hunter. Good catch. Listen, they confirmed it. So it's real, not a prank. XRP's big time. It's sitting there with the big the big money. They love it. The people said it the whole time. Yes, they are right. The people just don't want to get out of that, that, that hatred towards XRP, that pessimism towards XRP. They don't want to feel good about it. It's Hey, it is what it is. Let them feel the way that they feel. But it says here, however, Uphole has entered the conversation attesting that Fed now processes XRP withdrawals into U.S. bank accounts. In the, in the post, Uphold noted that residents of the United States whose banks support Fed now, and that's important. That's why everyone would experience something different. The system is fragmented. <sighs> it says here, whose banks support, and Fed now said that before. They said, hey, we got some banks, but they don't have a lot of banks because once again, I, I showed you the articles Fed now is pretty much a failure. A lot of banks don't want to use that system. They're not going to want to use that new SWIFT system that they're building either. So it's only certain banks. It's not all of them. Everyone will have a different experience. You know, all of it, the new financial system really, once it's up and running, if we ever get to that point, I believe we will. But this is just my opinion. It's a fragmented like um, quilt. Like it's all just knitted together. It's all these different pieces fitting together. You know, but um, it says whose banks support Fed now or RTP can enjoy instant withdrawals in XRP to USD from Uphold. And they screenshot it and cropped the tweet. It says fact. This is from Uphold at Uphold. If you reside in the US and your bank works with Fed now or RTP, you can instantly withdraw your XRP to USD on Uphold. There you go. 
There you have it. Boom. They dropped the they dropped the bomb on the people. It is what it is. If this is not super bullish, you know, I don't know. I don't know what is. I don't know what is to show that XRP is in the door. Ripple is in the door. So if these instant withdrawals from uphold processed either through Fed now or RTP incur a variable fee of 1.75%. In particular, it attracts a minimum charge of $1 and a maximum cap of $150. And then they go into a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, when Fed now began and all that, all that, but we already know that. So, you know, it's like, you know, listen, a lot of people see, I'm not like this. I get some stuff right. And I know that I can, I'm capable of getting something wrong. The difference is I'm willing to make a mistake and learn from it, grow from it. Every mistake is a victory. Every loss is a victory. Like, I listen, you've been through sports enough. You're not afraid to take a loss because, you know, somewhere out there, there's somebody that may be bigger, stronger, faster, have been doing it longer than you. And you're probably going to take a loss. I've seen the greatest people of all time take a losses. Listen, you know, especially I'll tell you what, um, I, I think I, I think only one person I know that didn't take a take a loss. And I, I and I just know them from training under them. They were a legend at the time. Let me let me look this up. Kale Sanderson, because we went to a camp with Kale Sanderson. Those who are in the wrestling community, uh, you know, uh, scholastic freestyle wrestling community know Kale Sanderson's name. Um, a legend right next to uh, Dan Gable. And um, at the time, I don't think Kale Sanderson had any losses at all. None. And that's the only person I know that never took a loss. But I'm going to look it up right now. Kale Sanderson, did he lose? Let's type that in. I just want to know. No, no, he didn't. Salt Lake City, Utah, U.S. Sanderson is the only wrestler in NCAA Division I history to go undefeated in official matches with more than 100. Other than him, I don't know anyone else that went undefeated. Everybody else I saw, and I saw a lot of great people. I trained with a lot of great people. Like I said, we went to camp. We learned from Kale Sanderson. He did a camp, and um, and I learned a lot from him, but I don't know anybody else. So anyway, when you're doing sports and athletics, you get used to that, like, okay, Maybe I can't perform this move now, practice it, get better. Maybe I take this loss here now, but when I see this guy the next time, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to work better. So we don't have this mentality. I mean, in combat sports, at least, I haven't seen it often where um, you just don't want to be uh, wrong so bad that even when the truth comes out, you're still denying the the logical, reasonable truth that someone's giving you. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of people in the world like that. Unfortunately, it is what it is, but I figured I'd just put that out there. So now let's move on here. The way you become better is by acknowledging your weaknesses and strengthening them. But if you never acknowledge your weaknesses, you can't strengthen them. You will remain weak in that way forever. I don't want to do that. I want to say I want to see the truth. OK, strip down naked. What do I need to improve? And instead of being a coward and running from improving that, no, I'm going to go straight for that. I'm going to acknowledge what that weakness is and I'm going to strengthen it. I'm going to get better at it. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to train more and nothing. I'm not, I'm not going to let anything stop me. And that's how you become better. That's how you become stronger, smarter, grow greater willpower through the acknowledgement of whatever is lacking. So now this article here is titled Uphold Launches New Finance Basket for XRP. I wonder if people actually, you know, acknowledge how much Uphold is doing for XRP. They've been supportive the whole the entire time. They have all of these different XRP products and things going on. I mean, big respect to Uphold. I don't know if they watch these videos or not. I know a lot of interesting people do because they've reached out to me. Shout out to Uphold. It says leading American trading platform Uphold has unveiled a new crypto investment basket featuring XRP and other financial based tokens. In a recent post on X, Uphold announced pushing out a new finance basket on its platform featuring six assets, including XRP. I thought they had an XRP basket before. Is this like a, something in addition to that? It's so a for context. Crypto baskets on on its system. It said crypto basket. I think they they had a typo here. It says crypto baskets on is a system. I don't know what that means. 
that seeks to simplify the challenges of building a robust cryptocurrency portfolio. It cuts the, the process of navigating through thousands of crypto assets to pick worthy investment instruments. All right. We know that. Essentially, Uphold Baskets equip users with a one-click route for crypto portfolio diversification. That we know, but let's talk about the XRP. What is the, is there something new going on? Is this the same old basket? Oh, I see. It says, for instance, the product went live with the initial baskets, such as the big three, which contain XRP, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. That's the one that I know. It says, new finance basket with XRP. It says, this new basket dubbed, quote, finance basket, unquote, encompasses XRP, XLM, uh-oh. This is real interesting for a company that's dealing with Fed now and... You know, now they're providing XRP services to to institutions. This is a bank coin basket. Yeah, this is a bank coin. I don't know about what this last one is, but it says this it has XRP in it. Big bank coin XLM, big bank coin XDC bank coin Hedera, big bank coin Casper. Oh, yeah. Listen, Casper is a heavyweight. I know we don't talk about Casper. Um the members only section, a lot of those great, great people over there brought Casper to me. All right. And I looked into it and I've been following it ever since. And what they're doing over there is fantastic. So they're a heavy hitter. They're definitely in the game. I don't The future looks bright as far as what I can see. Not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you my opinion. I don't know what this is, though. ADS, it says, and ad shares. I don't know what that is. I can't tell you about things I don't know. Um, but everything else in here, whoa. That's a heck of a easy. You know what's crazy? Before I, I'm going to stop that sentence and start this, this new thought. It's just my way. Um, you know, back then when I first came in, I had to look up all of this stuff. I had to look up what XRP was, what XLM was. XRP is the first crypto I ever knew about. Then XLM right after that. Because my brother said, yeah, you know the story. I'm going to tell you this is what it is. Give a little history. He said, hey, Mick, if you can't get XRP, get XLM. That's what he said. And that's where it all began uh, with those big two. And so that's why I don't play with them at all. I don't play with those. Um, that's serious business for me. But I had to look all of that up. XDC, I had to do research on that myself. Nobody was talking about XDC when I got into XDC. And you remember for like a whole year, we covered X XDC extensively. HBAR, same thing. I think HBAR was like maybe the fifth or sixth crypto. It's not really a crypto. It's hash, it's a, it's hash grab, but um, it's the like the fifth or sixth one that I learned about. And I just found that by mistake, just by looking through a whole cadre of cryptos I was reading about what they do. And I was like, oh, this H bar stuff sounds very interesting. This is before all the partnerships. This is before they got all of those different um, big name entities on their 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 council. Um, and now they're just making it so easy for people to get in. But you know what? This is not I don't think this is for regular people. I just don't. I think they have to offer it to regular people. I think this is for the big money people that might want to just get in easily and just acquire things easily. But they have to be fair. So they make it available on both sides. So then they talk about other baskets, but I don't, I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care about other baskets, except that, wait, wait, no, 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 I'm wrong. I should care. Wow. What is Uphold doing? They're snapping in a good way. See, when we said snapping where, when I was younger, that means you were on fire. We have phrases like that. Oh, he's snapping. Oh, he's on fire. That means you're doing really good. And here they're snapping. Look at this next basket. They're making it so easy for people. It says they added a basket that has chain link, Ethereum, Quant, what? Cosmos, Avalanche. Listen, you all know about Ethereum. Chain link is a heavy hitter. You know, I'm super bullish on them. You know, I'm extremely bullish on Quant. I got a good amount of Quant and I'm holding nothing like I'm holding long into the future with Quant. That's how bullish I am on that. Cosmos, I don't know a lot about it, but I've heard it's solid. Avalanche is very solid. And Polkadot is solid. These are some heavy hitters. All right, Uphold. Wow. That's um, that's interesting. Just my humble opinion. Just my humble opinion. That's interesting. So now let's move on from there. That was two good articles. I didn't <laughs> I didn't expect those articles to be that good. <laughs> you know, I need things to entertain me. I think I need things that are also informative. I need a combination of things, you know, to get me going. Make me think. 
All right. Maybe feel something. So now this article here is titled Bitcoin's current 18 percent retrace is right on schedule and, it, and is actually good news. Here's why. And I think I've been iterating the same thing. I, like, And I, I said this. I said there was going to be some pullbacks. Um, there was going to be some dips, some corrections. And, and, and typically, I believe from what I've read, that happens before the halving. It, you know, listen, let's read this a little bit. It says Bitcoin is in the first phase of its halving and is on track with uh, analyst predictions, crypto trader and analyst wrecked capital has revealed. According to a tweet, Bitcoin's 18 percent retrace in the past weeks was expected as similar slumps occurred before the second and third halvings. That's why I thought. So this typically happens. This indicates that Bitcoin would repeat many of the incidents witnessed in previous events, including the post halving surge that would propel the asset to new highs. It says the three phases of the Bitcoin halving are the final pre halving retrace, the reaccumulation and the parabolic uptrend. The first stage usually occurs 28 to 14 days before the event and can last for weeks. The second phase comes after the retrace has bottomed and can last up to five months, while the third can last for more than a year. During the halving in 2016, the retrace was 38 percent and spanned four days. In 2020, it was 20 percent deep and lasted eight weeks. Sorry, a little pop up there with Bitcoin roughly 13 days away from the halving. The asset has declined approximately 18 percent over the past three weeks. Wrecked Capital noted that this cycle has exhibited some qualities from both 2016 and 20 halvings. And as a result, many repeat pieces of their pre halving price ten tendencies. All right. So now let's move here because uh, I didn't even get to half of this banking news. Right? We're already 18 minutes into the video. So now. There's a lot going on here in the banking industry. This is from payments.com. And this article is titled Commerce Bank to integrate PPI platform ISO 20022 for X border payments. Let's scroll down here. Commerce Bank is updating its payment platform in Germany to execute cross border payments. The bank will use the SWIFT network to process cross-border payments and the Target 2 or Euro 1 payment systems to process high value and, ur and urgent payments. Commerce Bank said in a Thursday release. Oh, wait a minute. Now, keep in mind, SWIFT is trying to um, move over to a DLT based system. Right they're, they're They're building some sort of platform. Who knows who they're going to work with? They're already working with Chainlink. They say they're going to bring in other companies. I think that what they're going to be coming up with, and I could be wrong, but we'll wait and see. I mean, we shall see. Um, it's going to be something similar to what Fed now has, where they bring in a lot of different companies. You see Fed now, they just admitted in the first chapter they're using XRP uh, or they can. They have a bevy of different companies they can connect to. I think that's what Swift is doing. But the first company they brought in was Chainlink. And they said in an the article they're willing to bring in more. They said up to four more or something like that. But who knows? They could change that on the fly. Right. But. What this is doing here, that we also read about this, where until that happens, they had also uh, was it Swift or was it the ECB? One of them had posited the idea of using multiple of the legacy system offerings to all combine together in order to simulate or bring something together that's similar to um, to the new financial system. I'll just use that term, right? So as you see, they have their the cross-border payments thing from Swift, legacy system offering, Target 2, legacy system offering. This is not going to last because the people want something, the institutions want something faster, better, cheaper, and such, right? Um, but this is what they're going to be doing until then. But this is good activity to show that they're trying to keep up. They're trying to update things. Things are moving forward. It says to accomplish this, the bank is using PPI's traffic payment hub, according to the release, it expects to complete the migration by the end of 2025. Quote, with integration of the traffic payment hub from PPI AG, we will tap into the full potential of ISO 20022, and we will be able to offer our private and small business clients and corporate institutional clients considerably better services for executing payments and important innovations for cross-border payments, unquote. Simone Lofkin, global head of payment platforms, Commerce Bank said in a release. All right. So ISO 20022 is in effect. 
Um, if you want to know how important that is, just go to Volante's website, Volante uh, Technologies website. They released a lot of papers that literally were titled. Well, now I can't say the literal title, but I'm going to paraphrase because I don't. It was so, it was like about a year and a half ago they released those. But a lot of people downloaded those. Those are easily found. But it, they were titled something like "The Importance of ISO 20022." And then you can go get it from the professionals, right? Um, you can get the information on it from the professionals because there's always been a lot of debate over ISO. But listen, like I said, go straight to the professionals when you want to know something. All right. So now let's move on here. We have more banking information. So stable coins are all the rage and stable coins are everywhere. They're everywhere, right? It's not going to change anything. I mean, I showed so much information in yesterday's video. Doesn't change anything. They don't serve the same purpose as native tokens. They can't do the same thing as native tokens, but they serve their purpose. And here we have this article. This article is titled Sony Bank to conduct a stable coin trial on Polygon. Polygon is one of our original coins here. All right. And I believe they're going to do well far, far into the future. Just my humble opinion. So Sony Bank is conducting a stable coin proof of concept on the Polygon blockchain. It is exploring ways to adopt stable coins to the group's gaming properties. Really? Wow. That could be big for Polygon. Sony Bank, the, the banking arm of the Japanese gaming and entertainment conglomerate, has started a proof of concept to issue its own stable coin pegged to a fiat currency. A Nikkei report stated the trial is set to occur on the Polygon Matic blockchain. It says, due to the advantages of reduced payment and remittance fees, Sony is exploring the use of stable coins to promote the company's intellectual properties in gaming and sports, according to the report. So now let's move on here. I want to get this, this last. I have just two more articles. We're doing good right now. So then we have this article here from Ledger Insights and it's titled First participants in ECB wholesale DLT trials dominated by Germany. We have some footholds in Germany. Stellar uh, has some has a bank in Germany. They rolled their stable coin out on Stellar at some point. I'm not sure of the update on that, but it did indeed happen. Um, and I believe a few other bank coins have some relationships in Germany. But overall, you know, there's bank coins that just dominate when it comes to Europe, like Quant, for example. But let's continue here. It says yesterday, the European Central Bank shared the list of the first institutions to participate in the wholesale DLT trials using central bank money for settlement. The participants include 10 institutions, six market DLT operators, and five central banks. Applications are still open for the second wave. Last December, the ECB launched its first call for participants. The trials will involve real transactions as well as mock simulations, with most of the tests focusing on security settlement. The Euro system also plans to consider use cases for payment versus payment FX and cross-border payment. Three settlement solutions are part, are part of the trials provided by the central banks of Germany, France, and Italy. The Osterreich, uh, Oster, Osterreichish National Bank, I probably just mutilated that, that, that name, forgive me, is also participating as a DLT operator, plus the Bank of Luxembourg is involved. It says of the 10 participants, seven are German, including local JP Morgan subsidiary. One is from France, BMP Paribas, that's one of our banks. And two are from Luxembourg, European, European Investment Bank and Sparkies. The other seven German institutions are B. Metzler, Deca Bank, Deutsche Bank, DZ Bank. Sounding familiar, huh? Deutsches Boris Eurex Clearing and Landesbank Baden Württemberg. It says the ECB didn't share how many applications it received. All right, we're going to stop right there. So now let's close out with. Just a little bit of gold news. So this article was titled Gold Price Forecast, Major Breakout and New Bull Market Confirmed. Wait, let me scroll down. They always talk about a lot of other things before they get to gold. It says gold is confirming a major breakout above $2,000. The last event of this magnitude was in 2005 when prices left the $400 level behind forever. 
It says gold is short term overbought and prices are due for a pullback. However, it's important to note that in robust bull markets, prices persist higher despite overbought conditions. Tomorrow's employment report could trigger. And I think that um, when did this article come out? Is this today or is this yesterday? No, it came out today. I thought the jobs report came out today. Am I wrong? That's why I questioned that. Am I wrong about that? Because I thought the information already was affecting gold today, but the article says April the 5th. My calendar says April the 5th, unless I'm in some some sort of time warp and my calendar is wrong. No, it says Friday, April 5th. So I need to look into that. I need to look into that. It says here, secular commodity cycles last about 30 years from peak to trough. During the first half, commodities beat stocks, but underperformed the last 15 years. According to the graph below, they have a graph there. A new commodity cycle started in 2023, implying tangible assets should outperform stocks into 2038. Whoa. Before rolling over and underperforming from 2038 to 2053. Of course, there's no guarantees, but we'll see if that actually happens. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.